In Andy Weir's novel The Martian, stranded astronaut Mark Watney uses the Pathfinder lander to re-establish communications with NASA. But it wasn't just Pathfinder that he recovered from its landing site. The Sojourner rover was there as well. But what exactly was the Sojourner rover? That's today's Martian tie-in on Vintage Space. NASA's Pathfinder lander reached the surface of Mars on July 4th of 1997, but it wasn't alone. It carried with it a small microwave-sized rover called Sojourner. Sojourner was the first rover designed to rove Mars without any attachment to its lander. That means no tether for communications or power relay. And interesting historical note before we go any further. Sojourner may have been the first successful rover to rove the surface of Mars, but it wasn't the first to actually land on the Red Planet. The Soviet Mars 3 mission took with it a small Prop-M rover. The Prop-M rover was designed to stay attached to the lander with a tether that would give it power and relay information. The Prop-M rover was designed to stay within a tether's length of the Mars 3 lander. That way it would always have power. And because the Soviets weren't sure what the surface of Mars would look like, they used skis instead of wheels for this rover. It was designed to kind of shuffle along the surface. But the Prop-M rover never got to shuffle its way across the Martian surface. Mars 3 landed in a death storm and the mission died not long after it began transmitting data. But back to Sojourner. Like the Pathfinder lander that brought it to Mars, Sojourner was a proof-of-concept rover. It was a small, six-wheeled rover designed with a rocker bogey suspension system designed to give it clearance over small rocks. It reached Mars inside the Mars Pathfinder lander, which meant that it had to get off the lander and onto the Martian surface, which was done by a ramp. Two small guide rails guided the small rover off the landing platform and onto the Martian surface. Once there, it had some autonomy, but it was largely controlled by a driver on the Earth. The driver used images from the rover's cameras as well as images of the rover from the Pathfinder lander to determine what the rover was facing. If it was facing a giant rock that it couldn't climb over, the driver would order it to go sideways to try to go around the rock. If everything looked clear, the driver would order it forward a small distance, enough to make sure that it didn't run into a hazard that it couldn't see in the image. But this was a painfully slow process. Depending on the relative positions of Mars and the Earth at any given time, communications could take around 10 minutes one way. Sojourner was never intended to last very long. All of its major objectives, mainly roving, taking pictures, and a few samples, were all packed into the first seven souls of its activity, a soul being a day on Mars. Mars, which is about 24.7 hours. But Sojourner, like Pathfinder, far outlived its design life. The small rover lasted 12 times longer than it was designed to go and went far further than the 33 feet it was intended to go from the lander. That's because the extended mission was basically free time for NASA. Why not push it and see just how far it can go? Images of Sojourner's wheels, both tracks they made and abrasions on their surfaces, told NASA scientists a lot about the Martian surface. The rover's Alpha Proton X-ray spectrometer did take some measurements on the composition of rocks and soil. And it sent some 550 images back to the Earth through the lander. Sojourner didn't actually have a communication system that would allow it to talk directly to NASA. Sojourner continued pushing further away from the Pathfinder lander until September 27th when communications with the mission ceased without warning. Probably because it was the first time we did it, Sojourner will always be my favorite little rover. What do you guys think of the microwave on wheels? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, leave other questions and comments below as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter's AST Vintage Space for daily Vintage Space updates. And with new episodes going up most Tuesdays and Fridays, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.